Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 9, Hebrews chapter 9. We got to look at verse 27 and 28. Hebrews chapter 9, verse, verses 27 and 28. The title of the message is, You Need to Think About Death All the Time. You Need to Think About Death All the Time. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 27 and 28. And as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Brother Jay, can you pray for the message? Amen. Amen. You need to think about death all the time. As a Bible believer, and generally as Christians, you really don't think about death too much. You don't really discuss death too much. We talk about heaven. We talk about many of the doctrines. However, the Bible says it is appointed unto men once to die. So there is a there's an appointed time when a man is supposed to die. The reason many people don't serve the Lord like they should is because, like Brother Nathan prayed, everybody thinks about what's in it for me. When they first meet people, they think about what's in it for me. When you deal with people, what's in it for me? When you're doing your job, what's in it for me? When you are doing anything for somebody, First thing, first thought you comes to your mind is, what's in it for me? So when you look at people, or when you look at things, you think of it as like some kind of a, you know, object that will return some favor, return some material, return some financially to you. And as Christians, you and I should never think like that. We shouldn't be dealing with people with the thought of, what's in it for me? You don't do good to others so that you expect good to come back to you. You don't share your joy with others so that they will share joy with you. And if they don't, you've become bitter and that you don't like that person anymore. You know, that's why there's a lot of detention, uh, dissension amongst Christians because they're so selfish. All they think about is, what's in it for me? When Christians stop thinking about death, there's no fruit in their life. When Christians stop thinking about death, there's no witnessing in their life. When Christians stop thinking about death, there's no charity. When Christians stop thinking about death, there's no love in the family like it should. What does death do? You know, death makes you think. I mean, when you think about death, it makes you think. You know, Pastor Cass Shry passed away. It makes you think about him. Doesn't it? I mean, it makes you think about him. Before that, when he was alive, you think you thought about him like you think about him right now? I guarantee you don't. You know, when, when your loved ones pass away, you tend to think about them more and more and more. However, there's going to be a stage, you know, where you think about him. And then, you know, weeks later, months later, and probably you won't think about him anymore. You know, you'll be reminded here and there. That's a human, you know, that's how human think. When you meet a person, do you think about their death? Yeah. 
whether it's your family, whether it's your acquaintance, whether it's your coworkers, whether it's your friends, you know, cousins, you know, anybody. When you meet people, do you think about their death? Right? If you think about their death, the way you treat them, the way you, know, you interact with them, the way you talk about Lord Jesus Christ with them will change. Why? Because death is inevitable. Death is appointed to every man. However, you and I don't know when it's going to happen. I mean, do we know what's going to happen tomorrow? The Bible says, boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Which means death should be a motivating factor in your life when you're serving the Lord. If today's the last day I'm going to see a certain person, I'm going to treat them differently, wouldn't you? If today is the last person, I mean, last day that you could talk to them about Lord Jesus Christ, you got to do whatever you can to talk to them about Lord Jesus Christ. Who knew some people will pass away so suddenly? There are many occasions you know, from testimonies from all these Christians where they have one regret. That one regret is that they had a chance to witness, but they never did. They talked to a friend who was on hospital bed. And okay, okay, I'll talk to you, you know, tomorrow. Okay. And then what do you know? You get a phone call next day that the friend passed away. You are all ready to talk to that person about the salvation, you know, how to get saved, about Lord Jesus Christ. But you waited too long. Next day, you heard that his appointed time was that night. And that soul is burning in hell because you did not do your job. Of course, he had his choice. God gives everybody a choice, and God gives everybody opportunity to get saved. However, you were the person, you were the person who had that opportunity to share the gospel before his death. But you didn't. How many times... Have you gone through your lives where you could have and you should have, but you never did? How many times when the Holy Spirit was convicting you, pushing you, share the gospel with that person? All the time. Talk to them, right? Convict us. But you, you don't do it. You resist. You resist the Holy Ghost. And then you justify by saying, there's another day, Lord. There's tomorrow. There's day after tomorrow. But suddenly, out of the blue, you hear the news that the person passed away. I mean, unfortunately, you know, I'm at fault too. I had a, I had a coworker. You know, he was a young guy. He, was, he, he just turned 40. It happened a couple of years ago. Very bright person, very bright person. He came out big in the company news and I think somewhere in the newspaper too. Bright guy, always says hello, you know, you know. I mean, you would never think that something was wrong with him. But suddenly, his face complexion changed. He wasn't as bright and jovial like in the past. And something was bothering him for sure. Uh, I mean, even if it's at work or whatnot, you know, if you pray and then if you, you know, know that the Lord wants that person to get saved, you, you, God always gives the opportunity, you know. So I was like, man, I was biting my nails and like, okay, Lord, give me opportunity. When Lord did give me opportunities in the past. And suddenly, what do you know? He stopped showing up to work. There was no more communication. So everybody thought, you know, something was not right. And come to find out, he committed suicide. He hung himself in the, you know, backyard in the tree and that found him. That, that, that's probably like the, one of the biggest, you know, regrets and shame that I have, right? Where you just 
tend to wait? Just because he's a young guy, do you think he's going to live forever? Healthy guy? You don't know what's going on in people's brain. You don't know what's going on in people's heart. You don't know what's going on in people's thought. You don't know what's going to happen. If I was thinking about death, which I should have, if I was thinking about death of everybody that I acquaint with, everybody that I deal with, then probably my action would have been different. If I knew that guy was going to commit suicide that same day, I'm pretty sure, I don't care what anybody was telling me, I would have taken him aside and talked to him about Lord Jesus Christ. And maybe he'll still be alive. Maybe he'll be serving the Lord. However, I don't know if he was saved or not, but one thing for sure was that he's not here anymore. And when you go to funerals like that, it's very, very sad when you don't know if that person was saved or not. And especially if you know most likely they weren't saved because they never had any testimony or anything, then it becomes extra, extra, you know, sad. I'm pretty sure many of you listening have the same type of experience. You cannot look at people as someone you constantly remind yourself, what's in it for me? You can't. you got to go over that. This person will eventually die one day. Will they be in heaven or hell? I need to talk to them about Lord Jesus Christ. If it's the last thing that I need to do, even if you know, it jeopardizes our relationship, I have to, right? Sometimes you don't talk to people because you think it's going to jeopardize your relationship. What's more important, right? Their salvation, their eternity in heaven or hell, or your feelings, right? I don't want my feelings to get hurt. If I bring up that topic of Lord Jesus Christ, they might not talk to me again. What if they die that same day? Are you still going to be talking about, oh, I'm glad, you know, he or she never hated me. Because, you know, I didn't talk to our Lord Jesus Christ. No. If you're truly saved, and if you have the Holy Ghost in you, right, if you're saved, you got to be so sad. You got to be heartbroken. That's why you and I need to think about death all the time. When you think about death, you truly, truly will have something extra, some more love for the lost souls out there. Think about it. It's human nature. It shouldn't be. When you see someone on their deathbed, you feel more sympathy. Your heart goes out to them a little more because you, you know that inevitably, you know, you won't see them anymore. However, people that you see on a daily basis, you take them for granted. Huh? Right, you're like, okay. I'm going to see you again tomorrow. I'm going to see you again next week. It's fine. Uh, you know. But whatever it is, you know, we'll, we'll deal with it later. And then time passes by before next week comes, and that person isn't here anymore. And they're like, oh, that person isn't here two weeks later. Oh, and that person here three weeks, four weeks, and come to find out that person is gone once and for all. And what's left of you? It's left of you is shame and regret. Death shouldn't be the only, that shouldn't be a topic that's only topped by, you know, suicidal maniacs out there, right? Why do, you know, people committing suicide, are they the only one who needs to think about death? Right? You know, it's a baloney when people tell you, oh, don't think about death, you know, you'll get you depressed and stuff. You know, they don't know anything. You need to think about death every day, every second of your life. So that the way you serve the Lord change, so that the way you serve others change, so that you could really, really be out there and prepare for death, not only for you, but for others. Wouldn't you want your loved ones, 
Wouldn't you want your family and friends and co-workers and cousins and every neighbor out there to be prepared for death? There are a few last words. You know, Martin Luther said, Our God is the God from whom cometh salvation. God is the Lord by whom we escape death. John Knox says, Live in Christ, live in Christ, and the flesh need not fear death. John Wesley said, the best of all is God is with us. Farewell, farewell. Charles Wesley said, I shall be satisfied with thy likeness. Satisfied, satisfied. I mean, these are people who are ready for death. They're prepared. I mean, what about you? Are you ready for death? Like, I'm only 10. I'm only 7. I'm only 9. I'm only 12. I'm only 50. I'm only 60. I'm only 70. Yes, are you ready for death? Because the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die. You just don't know when that appointed time is, but it's God's promise. It is appointed unto man once to die, but after this judgment. I mean, are you prepared to die? Are you prepared for your death? That's why when you think about death, number one thing is that it should motivate you and it should challenge you to serve the Lord each day and every day. If you and I thought today was the last day of our life, what would you do? What would you do? If you knew that you're going to die at midnight tonight, what would you do? Would you live the same? Would you live the same life that you've been living? Or would you change some stuff? Would you read some Bible? I mean, would you actually open the Bible and start reading it? Would you get on your knees and start praying for your family, your loved ones, ministry, everything else? Would you actually go knock on your neighbor's door and start witnessing? Would you call someone that you haven't talked to in a while, but you know they're not saved? and talk to them about salvation, I guarantee you, your life will change. The way you live your Christian life will change if you thought about death and if you thought about today being your last day. Only the Lord will fulfill your heart, I guarantee you. I mean, if you're truly saved, if you have Christ in your heart, one thing that you don't want to die without is what? Knowing that you serve the Lord, right? If you die without serving the Lord, man, that's, that's a shame. Think about the judgments that are Christ, right? I mean, you and I have a big judgment coming for us, you know, which we should be very scared of. However, you have opportunity to prepare for death and prepare for judgment you have opportunity, and you have that motivation to serve the Lord. You see our faithful man, you know, passing away and gone up to heaven to be with the Lord. And you think about the death. Shouldn't that, like, light a fire in your heart where, you know what? You know, literally, I don't know when I'm going to die. I don't know when he's going to die. I don't know when she's going to die. You know what? I'm going to do better. I'm going to really, really serve the Lord as if, as if today is the last day to serve the Lord. Then you know what happens? You don't become petty, right? You don't become bitter about little things. Some of you guys think that you're going to just live your life forever, and then you're always like petty about little things, right? He said this, she said this, you know. Uh, I mean, little, little things that only babies should be fighting about, adults are fighting. Uh, so people are, you know, having grudges with each other, like, for a long, long time because they think that, oh, yeah, you know, we're going to live forever and stuff. Those petty things will go away. Why? Because you're thinking about death. Right? When you think about death, even when you... I don't know how the Lord thought us, thinks about, right? Even you've seen it somewhere. When you see your enemy about to die, how do you feel? 
Right? I don't think anybody will be like shouting and jumping joy, right? right? I mean, even if they're the worst of the characters, because you know, you and I are sinners. You know, we're we're sinners. Well, we're like we're worse than nothing. And then don't think that you're better than the other sinner, right? You know, that's that's a pride gotten into you. You and I are no better than any other sinner out there. You're like, oh, I didn't go out there and, you know, commit murder and all these horrible things, but you did in your heart. And why, is, why do you think that anything that all you, what you see is the only sin out there? You had horrible thoughts in your heart many times, right? I mean, you, if you lusted after a woman, I mean, you're, it's a, you committed adultery already, right? You know, according to Matthew. I mean, you are a sinner, and everybody is a sinner. And think about it. That's how you can overcome that barrier and obstacle. Even the people that you don't like and people that you hate, you could witness to them. Why? Because one day they're going to die. And if they're not saved, they're going to burn in hell. Lord died for you and me. Lord died for his enemies. I mean, think about it. Lord Jesus Christ died for the world who hated him, who sped upon him, who crucified him. You think you're better than the Lord? I mean, how dare you say, oh, he doesn't deserve salvation. She doesn't deserve salvation, you know. He doesn't deserve grace. She doesn't deserve grace and mercy and mercy. Who are you? Have you thought about your death? I mean, if you die without receiving Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you're going to end up in hell. You got burned up forever and ever and ever. But by Lord's grace and mercy, you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. You heard the, you heard the gospel, and you're saved. And you're, you should be thankful for that. Well, one of the things that happens to people who always think about death is that they're very appreciative. They're thankful. Somehow, when you see someone about to die, you don't really see their bad things, per se. You tend to try to remember their good things. I don't know, something about death that brings sympathy and empathy to people. Like, okay, he's about to die. She's about to die. Man, even though we had our differences, I still want that soul to get saved from hell. I'm going to reach out to him. What happens when people know that they're about to die? They tend to receive everything. They're more open. If you approach people knowing about their death, well, how do you think their attitude will be? They'll be more open. Have you ever thought about that? I mean, for many, unfortunately, don't think about death, so you don't even know what I'm talking about. But you should. You should be out there and be a witness for the Lord. Think about it. Okay. I feel like, man, you're going to, the death is imminent. I mean, you're going to die one day. But I really, really don't want you to burn in hell. I mean, Lord Jesus Christ died for your sins. I mean, I don't care if you don't like me. I don't care if you don't like the message. But I want you to get saved from hell. More likely than not, you know, because people have their pride, they might, you know, push you off or something. I guarantee you they're going to be thinking, what does, what does he mean? What does she mean? We don't even like each other. And that person wants me to get saved from hell. And they're going to think. And through that, they might get saved. But you keep your same attitude right now. Like, okay, you know, I want you to get saved, but you got to live your life. You know, I don't like it, blah, blah, blah. And you don't have any desperation when you're witnessing to people. Then they know it too. Like, oh, you just say it for the sake of it. And there's not going to be any fruit. Then you look at your life. When was the last time you thought about death? Right? Especially young people. You think you got to live forever. 
or at least until you're like 70, right? You know, 80. There are many young people who just drop dead. People who seem like the healthiest, people who seem like, you know, they have the, you know, best bodies. People who seem like, you know, they're most athletic, they drop dead. I mean, you see it on like national TV or even like high school floors, whether it's football field, whether it's basketball field, people just drop dead while they're playing. I mean, they have heart attack or something. They have like stroke. They just die. What's to say that it's not going to happen to you? What's to say that you're not going to die tomorrow? What's to say that you're not going to die next week or a week from now? Then if you live today as if it's your last day, wouldn't you change the way you're living? Young people, wouldn't you change the way you obey your parents? Wouldn't you change the way you love your parents? I mean, wouldn't you change the way you treat your parents? Because young people nowadays are you know, worse than you know, those bastards out there. You treat your parents like, you know, like a toy or like an you know, ATM machine. You only need it when you need money. You only need it when you need something. And that just not only goes for young children, it goes for older children too. I mean, if you have your parents, you're a child. You could be 80 years old, and if your mommy's alive and she's like 100, you're still a child. I mean, how do you treat your parents? I guarantee you, if you knew that your mom or your dad's going to pass away tonight, you're going to treat the way, I mean, you're going to change the way you treat your parents. What about your family? Think about your family. If you thought about death of your family, how would you treat them? How would you serve them? If your wife's going to die tonight, husbands, how will you treat them? Are you going to regret all the years, the way you neglected them and you did not treat them like a Christian husband? But what about wives? What if your husband were to die tonight? Have you been a good Christian wife? I mean, it's a question that you and I need to be thinking about every single day. Then what happens is, like I mentioned, you become more appreciative and you become more thankful. Do you want the last image of your loved ones of you being someone who's bitter, angry, who's unthankful, who doesn't serve the Lord? who sins all the time. I mean, that is not a good, good legacy to have. I mean, Pastor Cash Drive, I mean, everybody's saying that. I mean, we remember him as a soul winner. We remember him as a, someone with, you know, bright, joyful face. We remember him as someone that who gives encouragement to others. What about you? If for some reason today was your point in time, how will people remember you? For men, would people remember you as a loving husband? Or a bitter or nagging or unfaithful husband? For a woman, same thing. Faithful wife, loving mother, or for children, obedient child or disobedient child, right? But as a, someone child of God, were you a faithful child to God? As a child of God, were you someone who actually loved the lost souls out there and witnessed? The way you see the world, the way you interact, the way you think about your loved ones will change when you think about death all the time. Then, what equates death? You know, death means there's life after death. Then you're going to obviously think about heaven. You're going to think about hell. You think people who witness don't think about death? They witness because they think about death. Right? We heard, you know, Brother Bill Eubanks, he went to be with the Lord as well. I mean, he was a missionary 
evangelist. He was in Zimbabwe, you know, witnessing to hundreds of thousands of, you know, children. And he was famous for dropping, I think, like five, 400 tons, of, 400 pounds of, you know, you know, gospel track, top of Vatican. I right? think about it. <laughs> you know, he's a, he was a unique, unique brother. He went to be with the Lord. But what do you think he did what he did? Just like Pastor Cash, right? Why? Because he thought about death of people. If he see this kid from Zimbabwe, and people from Africa, they don't have a long lifespan, as you and I know, right? You know, some countries, it's like 30, 40. And some of you guys are older than 30. In those countries, you'll be dead already. He sees them. And before long, they're going to come to an age where they're going to die. So what does he do? He has love for those souls out there. He has love for those children. He gets hundreds and thousands. I'm sure he passed out millions of, you know, chick tracks to those kids and preached to them because he thought about death. Thinking about death will change the way you think, way you think about other souls. Right? When was the last time you truly felt so burdened about a lost soul out there? You, the souls that like, you don't even interact with. When was the last time? Probably never. That's how selfish you are. However, if you thought about their death, you're going to go the extra yard. You're going to go, even if they don't want to talk to you, you're going to try to get a hold of them because it might be their last chance. When was the last time you served the Lord like it was your last day? If today was the last day to serve the Lord and you're about to face death, when was the last time? You and I have this, you know, illusion, false sense of security that our appointed time is way, 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 way ahead of us. We think that, you know, rapture is going to happen and we'll be up in heaven. What if that's not the Lord's plan? What if for some of you, you're not going to see rapture, whether you're young or old? Then you seriously have to think about your death. Will you be that person who's prepared for your death? I mean, are you prepared? For some listening, I mean, are you prepared to die? Are you prepared for your death? I mean, if you did not realize that you're a sinner on your way to hell and trust that Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you should be scared of death because after you die, you're going to wake up in hell for those saved people. What's most important to you when you think about death? Obviously, it should be the souls of other people, your immediate circle. And if they're saved, think about how you serve them, your loved ones. I'm not sure, but many of you guys can do better. You could be a better husband. You could be a better wife. You could be a better child. You could be a better brothers and sisters in Christ. And you say, I don't know how to. Think about today is the last day. Think about death. Constantly think about it. Think about it. It shouldn't depress you. It should motivate you. It shouldn't keep you down. It should give you more courage and challenge to witness to others. When you truly think about it, you think about death of Christ, what he has done for you. He did that for you, for me, because he knew our appointed time. He knew what our death will bring if we didn't trust him or if he didn't die for our sins. You say, I want to have a mind like Christ. 
than think about death. Think about death all the time. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for saving us from hell through the precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because you, Lord, thought about our death, you gave your life for us. However, we go our days where it becomes wasteful, where we don't think about death, when we should be thinking about death all the time. We should stop thinking about what's in it for us. We should start thinking about the death of lost souls out there and help us to be more motivated and challenged, truly be filled with the Holy Ghost, having love for the lost souls out there who today might be their last day. Lord God, we thank you for sending us faithful men like Pastor Cash Drive and Brother Bill Eubanks. Help, help us to learn from their ways, especially the heart they have for the lost souls out there. Help us to be someone, be found faithful, even to the day of our death. The Bible says it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Help us to see that for every man, it is appointment. It is appointed once to die. Help us to go out there and be that witness, be that soul winner for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you, everyone.